So what I want to go through with this last bit is really just to introduce you to a couple of other different data sets that I've got for you to look at. So already up in your display group number one on the left hand side I've got the, the Landsat image which you should be relatively familiar with looking at now. And that's just in a, <coughs> in a excuse me, in a standard false colour composite display there. Now what I've also already loaded into the available bands list, and just remember to do this, you're just simply going through file, open image file, and grabbing these files from this week's practical folder. Um, I've already pulled in the Worldview 2 image and, and one of the MODIS images. There's quite a few there for you to look at. Now the reason I've pulled in these different images is to really show you a couple of different dimensions that we have within our data. So first of all, if you look at the Landsat thematic mapper image, again acquired on the 17th of October in 2009, you'll be familiar with the six bands that we have displayed there. So bands 1 through 5 plus 7 as well. Now if we expand the information on Worldview 2 here, what you see is that Worldview 2 actually has eight bands and it also has a panchromatic band as well. But they, they call their bands a slightly different names to what's called with the Landsat thematic mapper. And you'll also notice that the band centres given in, in micrometres to the right hand side in brackets here are also different to those in um, what you would see in Landsat. So for example, they they tried they try to match them up fairly closely but they're not exactly the same. So for example the blue band on Worldview 2 um, is at 0.48 micrometers. Um, and the blue band, which we know is band 1 in Landsat, is 0.485, so relatively similar. The green band in Landsat, 0.56, whereas the green band in Worldview 2 is 0.54. Okay, so the other things that we see here is that it's incorporated a number of other bands that Landsat doesn't have. So it's got this band that's called the coastal band, and this is really set within the blue wavelength range. Um, but it's quite a short wavelength. Um, they've inserted a yellow band, um, a red edge band, which we'll talk a little bit more about the red edge in class and exactly what that means and how that's derived, etc. And there's also two near infrared bands. There's no mid infrared though. So the longest wavelength here is 0.95 micrometers, whereas for Landsat we've got 2.2 microns there. Um, the other thing that you'll notice um, with the Worldview 2 data when we actually pull it up is that it, it is a, of a much higher spatial resolution. But just sticking with the spectral information at the moment, we'll next pull up the MODIS image. Um, so I've only included bands 1 through 4. There are more bands there, but um, we'll just look at these bands to start with. But be really careful with this the band location for these ones because the band assignment in terms of 1, 2, 3 and 4 is out of order in terms of their wavelength. Okay, So band 1 is representing red, band 2 near infrared, 3 blue and 4 green. Okay, Rather than band 1 being blue, 2 green, 3 red, 4 near infrared, etc. Alright, so let's go ahead and first of all look at the Worldview 2 data. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load an RGB image and what I might do is match what I've got with the Landsat data here to start with. So I've already got a false colour composite on the left of the Landsat data. So in a new display group, I'm going to also go with a near infrared, red and green colour composite there. And I'll load that into my new display group. So if I resize these windows so that you can see them quite clearly, um, what you'll see is you navigate your way around the image is that you can pick up individual features in terms of their spatial dimensions a lot clearer. So if we look, say, in and around, um, somewhere around campus or so, we can move in and around the northern suburbs here, um, down to their, their airport, and up around here. And you'll see similar features shown in your Worldview 2 data set, however what you actually see is a hell of a lot more information spatially. So you can pick up individual houses and individual trees, that sort of thing, whereas in your in your Landsat image 
you won't be picking up those features quite so clearly. The other thing that you probably notice is that if you look in the scroll window of both these two data sets is that the Worldview 2 image covers a relatively small area in comparison to the Landsat image. Okay, so in terms of the Worldview 2 data set we're really only looking at a small area in and around um, the northern suburbs of Darwin and over campus some of which is going to be slightly um, off the Landsat scene here. So I'll just move that one to the side for a second and open the MODIS image and again we'll go for the same colour combination so we'll go for a near infrared, red and green so that's a 214 combination and pull that up in a new display and load that. Okay, and again, if we're to to view this, um, you see the the full image in the scroll window, and if you move into certain areas around Darwin and the surrounds, and try and pick up individual features, you will see that there's quite a difference in terms of the spatial resolution of the data that you can pick up. So it's not really possible to see individual houses, etc. And if you want to have a look in a little bit more detail at exactly the same feature in each of those images, remember we've got that geographic link, so just right click on an image and go to geographic link and switch all of those on. Um, and now if we click somewhere in one of our images, hopefully in an, in an overlapping area, we'll be able to see exactly where those same features are. So as I'm, as I'm moving around the world view image, for example, I can see where that, that same area is in the Landsat image. And then if I'm also to move around my Landsat image, you'll see that these, the changes in, in the MODIS image. Okay? And the, the amount of detail that's available in, in one image, but not necessarily the other. But the big advantage that you have with MODIS imagery, for example, and if I'm to bring up that available bands list again, is the data that I've given you just to display here for the moment. So Worldview data obtained on the 12th of March um, in 2010 and MODIS on the 4th of March in 2010. With the MODIS data, I can actually get imagery every day so if there's cloud cover on one day, I can just get an image the next day. And it's also free. Worldview 2 data, however, is very expensive and only really acquires data when someone orders it or when the company thinks that perhaps there's a chance that someone's going to purchase data for a particular reason. And then if we look at Landsat data, we're capturing that every 16 days or so. So there's always a trade-off between what you can see in terms of spectral information and the number of bands, the spatial information in terms of how much of an area the whole image covers and how much detail you see within an image, and how frequently that image can be acquired.